Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. In this video today, I'm gonna to cover the installation and programming of my Seymour HMI panel. If you haven't seen my previous video, what you're seeing on the screen is where I took apart my old panel and am cutting out for the HMI. So if you haven't seen that, click on the card in the top right corner, check out that video, it's pretty awesome. But in the meantime, we're gonna carry on installing this HMI panel. Okay, so we are back. We have the control panel mounted. Got a test program in here. I kind of just kept moving because it's getting late. It's, it's dark out, out there. And uh, what a mess I have. So I pretty much removed this whole pile of stuff that's on the floor out of the panel. It was in a box, but my stepdad thought it'd be great to throw it on the floor and take a picture. Um, and then there's also this mess right here. That was all the front panel communications. Um, so now we only have, you know, like I said, this is kind of temporary, just getting things up and running for the night. I'll be back out here tomorrow, which in video editing time is in about 30 seconds. And I'm gonna reconfigure this. Uh, this cable doesn't need to be so long. I didn't have a patch cable, so I cut a cable and threw on two more of the, of the connectors. But I've got the ethernet switch wired in there power supply up here. I put all my expansion modules that I had available on this uh, PLC just to make space, but I do have room for one more. Um, so likely I'll be removing these contacts from here or these relays and moving them down here. I have this um, Panduit, but it's actually called Eboco. Uh, this is from Automation Direct. It's just way cheap on Automation Direct. And um, I'm connected here now to my laptop. This is, this is the next screen I'm working on developing um, for the panel once I get more of this IO figured out. Definitely gonna swap out this contactor here for uh, a DC contactor 24 volt coil because this is 24 volts AC. I'm tempted in right now to a power cord on the floor. Like I said, I'm just trying to get through the night and then tomorrow I'll come back and make things way better. But for now, here's your demonstration. And my stepdad wanted some colors, so it's like the city, city of brotherly love. But for now, the procedure is turn on the accessory power. And this is just like turning the key on the generator. You hold the glow plugs button for a few minutes, or seconds, I should say. And then you can hold the crank. And I can hear the generator started. And I'll let that run for a quick second to warm up. Now I've already had it running, so I'm not gonna let it go very long. And now I'm gonna transfer the power. As you can see, the battery charger has kicked in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the vent fan. Shutting down as simple as doing the process in reverse. Now I will say I'm very satisfied with this panel. The installation was quite easy and it's working great so far. Uh, took a little bit of learning to figure out the software side of things, but all in all, tomorrow when I clean up all this wiring, it'll be a much cleaner panel. Uh, chances are when I change this to the DC uh, contactor, I'll throw it in this can up here above panel SB1, which is my split bus panel. And if I take this screw out, I've already been in here planning this out. Um, I'll just run, chase my generator feeds up through the side into that can with the contactor and then back down into my generator main breaker. And then what I will likely do is just bend up a little piece of half inch EMT to come down around this corner. And I'll use that EMT for control lines and voltage sensing. That way uh, the PLC can, can verify that the contactor is actually closed and, and verify the generator voltage. So that's some of my plans. I'm gonna keep working on this panel tomorrow, which is now for you guys. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, here we are next day after I've been working on this for a while. Uh, we've got our Panduit wireways put in the panel and I just wanna take a second and mention, I really like these ones that don't have the fingers where it's solid. I was able to just drill my own holes where I needed them, how I wanted them, and it adds a lot of structure. So really cool, this again was um, Iboco Wireway from Automation Direct. 
few things still temporary. I have a jumper right here, that blue wire. I have the 12 volt, uh, 24 volt DC to DC converter that's running the solar panels temporary. I have a cord here still running the 24 volt AC power supply. I still need to connect in the solid state relay that is the emergency circuit. I made nice Cat5 cables. This little one was a little too short, but I didn't feel like remaking it. But then I have this one right here that runs to the control panel, the back of the HMI. And as you can see, I've got my program on my HMI. Um, it still needs some tweaking. I've mainly done hardware at this point. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and get more IO installed running some conduit and installing a control panel if all goes as planned. And you guys will see that here in a second. Okay, so we're back. I have this panel enabled, got some stuff programmed. Um, home screen here on generator control. You can see we have our various different buttons. Uh, I'll go over later how this actually works, but uh, this is just a get, get my folks by for the week. I'll come back with a new program and upload it and walk you guys through it better then. But we have a couple different screens, um, as you can see. Uh, need to program this one, but main one is generator control. They can manually start the generator, turn on the vent screen and stuff. And like I said, this is the HMI panel from Automation Direct, the Seymour 10-inch widescreen model. The biggest changes you'll see are if I open this panel, if you look inside, things are much, much cleaner. I have my Ethernet switch here. PLC, now these aren't being used yet, but I just have them in there as placeholders. I have my analog input module, which I haven't configured yet. I have the wind speed sensor coming into the high speed inputs on the PLC, and as you can see, the light is flashing because there is a slight breeze outside. Back of the HMI panel is all good, comes in, nice Panduit wireways, uh, generator relays, um, all in all, a very clean wiring system. The main loader contactor, as you can see, is still in here. I didn't end up going with the can. It just didn't work out very well. Diversion solid state relay. Uh, need to tie in this solid state relay still. 24 volt transformer. The spa fast heat relays. I'll get more into detail in this, but another change you can see is over here on the inverter side, I have a piece of 3 quarter inch EMT coming down. And here I have my control panel for, this is gonna have the BMS in here, balancing boards, I have my voltage transducer. Now this is zero to 50 volts, it's the AccuAmp. I know this is upside down, but I'll get more into detail of that later. Uh, I was gonna use a potentiometer, a 10 kilo ohm, 10 turn pot, and that was gonna reduce the battery voltage down, scale it down essentially, to a range that I can use on the voltage transducer however i messed up on the pinouts there's a video on the channel where i take it apart and i actually had fried that so next week i'll need a new potentiometer and i know what you're wondering this door how do i close this door i only pulled the hinges out and put it on the other side just while i'm building this panel and then i have a piece of panduit down here as you can see and that's going to be where all the balancing wires for the batteries come out so those new prismatic lithium batteries are gonna sit right here. It's only a 100 amp hour array to start out with, but we're gonna get all of our settings truly dialed in. And later on, I may have some uh, current sensors in here or shunts. And that's my main reasoning for put this enclosure here is for future expansion. But all in all, things are gonna be changing a lot in this area when I get those new prismatic lithium iron cells next week. I also got the control lines for the blue inverter pulled in, but not connected yet. I only did that because I already had the wireways open and it was really convenient to pull that wire through. But yeah, guys, pretty awesome setup I got going. There's still a lot more to come. So yeah, that's, that's what we got going on. Be sure to leave a thumbs up, comment any questions, anything you want me to go over in the next video. And of course, hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys all for supporting the channel so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.